G'day and welcome to Insights and Storytellings with me, Moon Willow. Thank you very much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Um, I tried to do one yesterday and the video went a little bit screwy. Um, and the day before, uh, I don't know. I don't know where I'm up to, to be perfectly honest. Um, <clears throat> but I thought I would jump on tonight and just see for myself and for those of you that join me on a regular basis, um, what the energies and the crystals and the cards would like to tell us tonight. <clears throat> so with that in mind, I think I'll jump straight into the, the crystals and we'll see, whoa, what's what. So, so tonight we've got um, Solidite, which you probably can't see on there because it's quite a dark room so around the throat chakra and um, I don't know about anybody else but um, <laughs> with the ums you can probably tell that um, my throat chakra doesn't seem to be working very well at the moment um, and it's I'm finding it quite difficult um, within the current circumstances and to really um, feel into my truth and because it's and then speak it which i find quite unusual because i'm a gemini so normally i can i have no problems normally with words um and and speaking uh but um it, it is it's feeling increasingly difficult at the moment <clears throat> It's almost like we're getting overwhelmed with information. The moon last week, or yeah, last week was was full, and more information is coming to light. And um, we seem to be constantly bombarded with more and more information, and it's difficult to discern what's <clears throat> what's true, what isn't. Um, has it been changed to um, elicit a specific response, or is it real truth? And it's hard to uh, sometimes gauge that, I find. Um, it's almost like we're being swamped with information. And then where does that leave us? Um, and it's hard to hear our own voice in that. Um, so it's really important at the moment to, to take the time to, to just sit and really find our own inner voice and hear our own voice at the same time. But again, it's also important to notice how we're speaking to ourselves. What are those thoughts saying? Are they negative? Are they positive? If they're negative, why is that? Is that actually our own voice that we're hearing or is that a voice from somebody else or from our childhood or a previous lives it's it is really difficult I think at the moment to hear clearly to really literally hear ourselves think which is strange because we're in isolation at the moment so I on another level it's only really our own voices that we can hear but every time we turn on the telly or turn on social media then we're being bombarded by other voices that are not necessarily trustworthy. Um, and that that melds with our own internal world as well and that can actually reinforce a negative opinion or harsher words. Um, so, yeah. As I say, it's quite, it's quite, um, quite strange that it is the throat chakra and I am really struggling with words tonight. Um, and I am very tempted just to turn off, but again, like with the heart the other day, it feels really important to be, um, to try and navigate this particular story. Um, and see where it takes us. So with that in mind, I'm going to shuffle the cards and see 
um, what cards come out in support of our throats. Um, along the way. The other side of um, the throat chakra at the moment is um, how much of everything that's been said around us is actually true. And there's a lot of times at the moment I'm finding that um, there seems to be this real need in the world to silence us. Um, and not giving us an opportunity to debate or question um, the narrative, question our experiences in the world. <clears throat> and in doing so, it's, it does bring about a catch in the throat. Um, so it is really important to have a look at our throat chakras and see where or how they're being blocked. Um, at what times do we hold back on what we want to say? and for what reason and there it's almost like there's an increasing pressure to close off our throats so that we're not able to speak or question or very much question what's going off around us and how that makes us feel and how do we verbalize that as well especially if we have health in um, a world that's meant to be incredibly unhealthy at the moment um, that can actually bring about its own pain and difficulties and consequences um, so very much working out how to soothe our throats but at the same time not compromising our authentic voice our true voice and our voices are very powerful and that I feel is why um, we're living in a society that is very much about blocking our voice and um, trying to ridicule those that want to speak a different narrative, those who want to speak their own truth that is contrary to what is meant to be the bigger narrative out there. Um, and at any point, if we go against society's norms or perceive society's norms, that it is hard to hold on to our inner light, our inner truth, our inner voice. And it's hard, as I said a few minutes ago, it's hard to hear our, our own voice in such chaos. It's almost like... Um, white noise it's hard to hear when there's a lot of white noise going off and it's almost like this constant bombardment is creating that white noise so it's hard to clear out and um, sift through all these different dialogues all these different stories to actually find what resonates for us find what feels real what feels true and how that impacts us um, in our ability to actually hear our own truth and then consequently speak it I know I'm going around um, but it that's what it feels like it, it and it feels at the moment that we are almost running around like headless chickens at the moment trying to um, stay sane in a very insane world <clears throat> and hold who we are in this because yeah it is really difficult and words are coming and going and I'm finding that with the energies at the moment as well it's almost like we're back on that roller coaster that we're not quite back in that oppressive I don't feel quite as oppressed or have such an oppressive feel from the energies as I did a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I'm noticing sort of more higher, lighter vibrations, higher energy access, um, and feeling that everything is, is going to be okay, and it's sort of like trying to hold those moments without getting lost in them as well, because it's almost like having to have two feet in both camps 
to maintain stability, which is almost, which is contrary as well, because it's like it's an instable world that we're walking through at the moment. So back into really grounding and feeling secure on this earth, on this planet. But at the same time, noticing that everything is not as it seems and holding that at the same time. So it's trying to find um, our own root, our own grounding, our own stability underneath um, whilst holding on in really strong winds, in strong um, energies going off around us where one minute they're high, the next minute they're low. And even at the same time, there are times bizarrely where I can actually feel both going off at the same time and depending on my own inner barometer as to which one is more present than the other, but I can actually feel both at the same time, which is an odd experience. And I'm noticing sort of like when we're more, well, when I'm more tired, that I tend to feel the lower energies, the, the more oppressive side of it to when I've actually been well rested and I can feel the higher energies. And I'm finding that both, as I say, are coexisting at the moment, but it is um, how I'm feeling inside as to the barometer as to which one is more present on an external level for me. So I think that's part of it. And I keep being reminded, I don't know whether you ever had these as kids, but um, there used to be the punch, um, the inflatable punching bag things that had the um, solid bit underneath. So as, it, as you hit it, it went down, but it came straight back up. But it, it very rarely did it stay in one spot. It was almost like it was constantly moving because of the um, the half circle underneath and the way that it was weighted. And that's my sense of um, how I am and I think other people are in this situation at the moment is it's very difficult to maintain a center, to maintain that inner strength, to maintain that feeling of being upright. And it's almost like the lightest touch or the lightest tap or the lightest breath of air will make us move in one direction or another, but it almost feels like we have no control because we haven't got a solid base on the ground, that the base is um, half a circle, so there's very little on the ground, so it doesn't take much for it to go over. And it never goes down completely, it always comes back up. So it's almost like at the moment, by being able to hear our truth, speak our truth, be aware of how we're contributing to the silencing of our voice and how we're hearing ourselves inside. That it's important that we actually have a look at our base, have a look at how we're sitting on the earth. Are we um, a half circle that will move at the slightest touch or are we more solid? Have we got just the one root going down in the middle of that, but still, so you like that and you can still rock around? Or have we turned that over so it is actually more solid and we have more roots going into earth? So we can actually feel more connected, we can feel more centered in ourselves. And as we start to live more fully within ourselves, we can actually hear our own voice. And we can actually start to listen and discern as to what actually belongs to us. Do we still want it? It may be something that we came up with, but it may no longer um, feel right for us. And we can change that. We can alchemize it. We can move it through. And one of the ways we can move through um, from the voice, from the throat, is actually through singing or Oms or any sort of level of vocalization or screaming, screaming into the wind. 
but actually really vocalizing, really allowing our voices to be heard. Um, and that we are entitled to express ourselves in the way that's right for us, but at the same time, it's useful not to do it in isolation, that we are actually finding places and spaces that we can actually communicate where we're not going to be slapped down, we're not going to be shut up, we're not going to be stopped, but we're actually going to be heard. And it may be that that other person has a different opinion, but they're willing to sit with you, with us, and listen and hear us so that we can start sifting through this. But the initial stuff needs to come from us. So the three cards is the mouse, a man and a dog. So there are those cards. So starting with the mouse, the robber mouse. <coughs> so by blocking our throats, we're using a lot of energy. It takes a lot of energy to hold this back in or to have that internal fight. And it, it, we're not always aware of how much energy that actually uses, and that becomes exhausting. Biting your tongue on the words you want to say, metaphorically and sometimes literally, utilises a lot of energy. And that's energy that could be released and alchemised. And as I'm saying, we can do this through singing or alms or humming, but just freeing up our throat and noticing the times that we may be having a conversation where we start to feel like a lump in our throat or we need to clear our throat, that there's the ums, there's the hesitation. There's usually a story behind that, but we don't always give ourselves time to actually hear those stories. So what we invariably do is squash it, we push it down, but that takes a lot of energy to do that and at the moment we're needing all the energy we can get to actually navigate the world that we're living in at the moment but it's also noticing when those times or places um, communications that we feel like we're being blocked more than other times and then start to seek out those spaces that we can free flow our voice, that we can actually join in a conversation and it flows and that creates energy and uh, take less time or go less often into the spaces where we're feeling like we're having to close down, that we're feeling like we're having to cut off our voice, that we're having to stop what we're saying. But at the same time, noticing the thought processes, the thoughts that come up in each of those situations, because that helps give a clue as to how much um, energy we're wasting at which time. And it might be, as I said, I've said in the past, it might be that it's because uh, it's a work environment and at the moment you haven't got the ability to move out from that job. Um, so... It, it's easier sometimes to not say anything, but what I find useful within that is um, going to or from that, that in situation, actually speaking to the universe, expressing how I feel about having to go somewhere that I find difficult to navigate because I don't feel able to speak a different truth. Um, although that doesn't happen to me that often these days, I have to admit. But also noticing on the way home as well that you may have found yourself in a situation where you weren't able to speak your truth. So speak that to the universe, express that, verbalise that instead of closing off from it and becoming resentful and building in a negative um, reaction and emotional response to that because, as I say, that takes energy and that's losing energy. And then finding, as I say, those people that you can speak with so that um, any residual annoyance, anger, 
frustration that you may not have been able to say to the individual that it's directed at, but you can actually work through it with somebody else, the universe or a friend, and, and actually speaking your truth there. So it actually has somewhere that it's directed, that it's not just held within, not just closed off. So that brings me into the next card, which is the male. And the male for me in these cards is about the masculine energy, so the logical side. And a lot of the information coming through with the way it's presented has a lot of logic behind it. But it doesn't resonate, doesn't fit emotionally when we're looking at it, when we're reading it, when we're perceiving it. And there is this push sometimes that um, having an emotional response is not is not enough to to disagree with somebody that you need to have hard evidence you need to have a theoretical underpinning to having something contradictory to what is being said what is the main narrative so you can end up having a war within <clears throat> from the logic and the emotional so it's about integrating it's about um noticing that sometimes there isn't a logic but actually your gut response is the appropriate one but if you sit with that the more often than not a logical explanation will present itself it may be that it's just that your emotional responses are a lot quicker than your thought process than your logic and it's allowing that to come in as well and giving yourself time for that to be expressed. So again, for me, at the moment, it's... If you do end up having a conversation with someone and they're trying to use a logic, they're trying to use their masculine logical side, their premise may be faulty, but they won't hear anything else than what they actually know. So in that situation, I would walk away. I wouldn't engage. But again, I would actually then express my frustrations about that situation somewhere else that I know that I would be heard. So I'm not closing it off. I'm not blocking it off in my throat. I'm not losing extra energy. I'm not causing myself pain. So, and then the last card <laughs> is the dog. So the dog's friends. And the reason why I smiled and chuckled at that point was because in each one of these, I have repeatedly said <laughs> that it is really useful to find um, those friends, those relationships with people that are able to be fully present, that are open to having a honest, authentic dialogue and communication that is who are prepared to listen to you, to listen to us, um, without um, pressure, without prejudice, without um, trying to put their story onto you. We do all have different stories. The way that we look at the world are all different, but that's half the fun. And being able to actually explore that, to explore ideas with other people so that we can actually work out how to progress forward, how to speak our truth. And sometimes we have a sense of what our truth is, and I think this is where the, the man is coming in, is that sometimes we have a sense of what our truth is, but we don't necessarily have the language. So that's where having a theoretical underpinning or having some extra logical information does help in expressing our emotions and our feelings around something. Um, just shouting that it's wrong um, or you're all wrong is not going to, you'll be perceived as a crazy person, which to be fair, I am at times and, and I'm quite happy with that. But it's, if you're going to give voice to your emotional responses inside or externally, it's, you need to have some language to go with it and that often means a sort of more logical understanding of what it is about the information that's presented. And often, it, it, for me, it's enough saying that I'm feeling like um, that there's smoke and mirrors going off at the moment, that a lot of what's going, 
what's being presented across the world is to elicit an emotional response. It's to elicit a specific psychological reaction to um, the information presented. So it's actually useful to take a step back and look at it from a more analytical or logical perspective. And having a look at the words that they're using, having a look at the words we're using and trying to understand why we have a specific reaction to certain words, certain terminology and where that's come from, from a genetic point of view as well, sometimes in a DNA perspective, but also our upbringing, our cultural aspects, our belief systems and how are they being eroded? Are they being listened to? Are we able to express that? And at the moment, it feels like we are being constantly bombarded and having to go from one thing to the next um, and getting so overwhelmed that the only reaction really is to numb out, to not pay attention at all. But that's losing energy as well because you're suppressing, you're pushing down everything that's sort of trying to bubble up to the surface. And by um, numbing out, it's not actually dealing with it, it's just suppressing it. And more often than not, I've noticed that, that in doing that, it just comes up more vehemently and more vigorously. And that's part of the way that... Um, that fear process and that stress and anxiety sort of continue so we can end up trying to self-soothe in ways that are not beneficial but it's almost like watching how much we're eating at the moment is it that we're trying to eat our own words to keep it down to not speak our truth to not shout our truth so i yeah i'm going to stop there because i feel like I've lost it again. Hey ho. Um, yeah, we've meandered. I've meandered quite a lot. So the outcome for me of today is that it is very much around our throat on an external level and internal level, how we're listening to ourselves, being very mindful of the internal dialogue, being mindful of our external dialogue and being also mindful of whether we are using things like food to... Um, literally hold down what we want to say to stuff our to stuff our throat so full that we're not able to speak being aware of the the loss of energy within that because eating too much can make us tired which means that we're not perceiving things correctly and we can become more exhausted in that particular way so that's a loss of energy also by holding down and not be not um, giving ourselves permission to speak our truth or actually giving ourselves the opportunity to know what our truth is that squashing is also using a lot of energy so it's being it's being mindful of that and noticing how much energy we're actually using to hold back our own truth using the male the masculine to um to try and integrate, to actually give expressions to our emotions and actually give an understanding of why they may be coming up for us. And then the dog, finding friends, finding people, finding spaces where we're able to explore these things without fear of actually being condemned or criticised for having an alternative viewpoint. And... A safe space to be able to play devil's advocate at times as well because I've noticed in debating when I was younger that actually taking the opposing side actually brings about more clarity um, because you're having to really um, find out what that what it is all about so it is really having that finding those friendships finding those spaces the communities to be able to explore um, our own truth and our authenticity and at times playing devil's advocate just to get a clearer understanding to take away the layers of actually what's being presented to us on the world stage. So 
I'm hoping this is resonating for some of you out there. Um, thank you for joining me. I'm going to see, I'm going to do an om tonight actually, to clear the throat. <clears> oh, <throat> oh, or my interpretation of om anyway. Okay, thank you very much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Take care of yourselves. Love you all. Bye for now.